Uh, in regards, you know, to the state aid formula, we we've been you know talking about this for the last four or five years yeah. at least, and probably longer before that. Um, the, the formula, the, the the way it's working right now, and, and what happens through that process, um, short changes basically short changes Utica tens of millions of dollars every year. Uh, we have uh, the Boise State Aid Planning Office, uh, Mr. J. O'Connor. He comes in every year, does his presentation after he analyzes the state aid formula as it relates to the first run that comes out of the governor's uh, budget mm -hmm. in, in late January. This year he did that analysis. Uh, he presented it at our board meeting before we presented our budget on Tuesday night. And uh, Mr. O'Connor, uh, after going through all the numbers and all the facts uh, in regards to the state aid formula, determined uh, through calculation that uh, Utica uh, for the next year will be short short changed about forty seven million dollars he also did I asked him I'd asked him to do a an aggregate and cumulative number over the last five years and when he did that uh, he came up with a two hundred and seventy three million dollar short change uh, cumulative over the last five years these are huge numbers and this comes, you know, over the last five years, uh, uh, for everyone, and, and a lot of people follow our budget when it's presented and we go through the process because we start very early in the school year, see that we are paying out things like charter school costs, yeah. which uh, uh, at the end of next year, we, we would have shelled out $12 million. You know, Over when, that four-year span or over so? The, over that four-year span. Right. So when you're shelling out numbers like this and it's not coming in on the revenue side, mm -hmm. then, you know, obviously, we, you know, you, you start seeing huge budget deficits, which which we have over mm -hmm. the last four or five so years. So basically with that, you, you, the Utica School District is paying for other students to go to a charter school in a sense. It pays for Utica students, you know, if they choose or elect voluntarily to go to the charter school. And, you know, uh, I just want to say for the record, I, I, I am not against charter schools. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, choice is fine. That's great. Um, it should be paid for separately through another line item. So a different way of funding it. yes it should not be paid for through the revenues of the, of the public school system especially during these times when 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 we're being sh you know shortchanged so it, it's it, it's a very difficult situation and every year when we go through the budget process it becomes more and more difficult and if you look at all the layoffs that we've had to do over the last four or five years close to 300 or more right 350 mm -hmm. over 350 uh, personnel layoffs majority of them teaching staff right you know the first things we try to cut obviously we prioritize you know we want to keep our teachers in the classroom or as many as we possibly can to keep the class sizes down because that's what we're here for instruction and in education so you know we've cut 22 administrators so we're half the size of that we were hmm. and and this is a very large district we, we we've cut custodial secretarial all the way down the line through all the bargaining units so uh, w when you look at this, these kinds of cuts, and at the same time, simultaneously, the school district is growing exponentially, mm -hmm. while many of the other districts in the area are on the decline, I mean, it's, it's, it, it becomes a very uh, serious problem. Talking to uh, Utica City School Superintendent Bruce Karam on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. So the goal would be to uh, recoup some of this funding, perhaps rehire some of these folks. Does this require a lobbying effort in Albany? And if so, how big is your group? Uh, who do you bring on a lobbying effort to Albany? How does that work exactly? What's the timetable well, for that? And, and that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we bring uh, several several parties to mm -hmm. this because um it, it's it's got to be a team effort mm -hmm. um we 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 joined a couple of years ago the conference of big five school districts uh which included buffalo rochester syracuse yonkers and new york city mm -hmm. and the reason why we we joined this um is because it, it would increase our lobbying efforts mm -hmm. give us give us a little more voice and so it would be heard in albany um over the last couple of years, we've been uh, somewhat successful in, in receiving additional aid, and and we're grateful for that. We're grateful for, for any additional monies that we get. But when you start out at such huge deficits and you're, and you're so underfunded, it doesn't do anything for those positions that we cut from years ago that we really need to restore now because the, the enrollment, the student enrollment is growing every month, every year, 
And, uh, oh, uh, for example, over the last five years, we had a 14% increase in student enrollment. That's over 1,500 students. And, we, and the challenges that you face with the, the 14%. That, that's, the other side, mm-hmm. that's the other side of the coin. Um, uh, you know, we, we service a, you know, a very high-needs uh, population that require uh, support services, uh, uh, additional guidance counselors, social workers, So language barriers there? Language barriers, that's mm-hmm. another one. Uh, we, we receive uh, 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 lots of ESL students, uh, and, and they come in every, every month. And that's wonderful. It's great for our community. Um, but the the problem is the funding source in order to provide these kinds of services that are really necessary for the benefit of the students. All right. So now these other school districts, are they bringing people as well to the lobbying efforts? And do they face the same challenges that you face, the other big school districts you mentioned? Yes, yes. And, and, and that's another good question uh, because um, – that, that's another reason why uh, we, we joined uh, the Conference of Big Five mm-hmm. is because there's a lot of similar needs. And they service, uh, inner city school districts service the same population of at-risk students or high-need students. So, yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of similarities in, in student population and, and operational um, needs and uh, in financial needs. So, yes, it, it covers the whole spectrum. But they're not being targeted the same way the Utica City School District is by the Attorney General. Why? Um, I, I really can't. You, you know, I, I mm-hmm. just can't answer that okay. question. Okay. All right. You, you know, um, um, but continuing with the first part of Dave's question is, do you know of specifically a, a district that is very similar to yours that is being treated different in the monetary sense, maybe getting more from the budget end of them, but still facing? Yes. And, and Jay, you, you see that a lot in upstate New York. Yep. Um, maybe not so much downstate, but upstate New York, mm-hmm. you do see that. And, and you, you, you have to draw your conclusions from that. Uh, the MLK uh, job, I think, is uh, changing. Is that correct? The yes, yes. Principal uh, job. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's mm-hmm. correct. Um, at Tuesday night's board meeting, we mm-hmm. not only presented the budget, um, we also uh, the board of education appointed a uh, principal, a new principal for Martin Luther King Elementary School. We were mm-hmm. very excited about that. Uh, we believe she's going to do a wonderful job over there. Um, it, it's 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 a wonderful school. It's a wonderful mm-hmm. community school. And there's a lot of great things going on over there. And they, you know, the turnaround process with that school began a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's moving in the right direction. The the test scores for ELA and math are are on the climb. Mm -hmm. And and, and it's, uh, we're we're expecting a lot of great things coming out of this. Where's she from? What's her background? Um, she is an assistant principal currently over at Proctor High School. Mm -hmm. And she has a very, very, uh, she has a a good uh, log of experience. Um, in different positions in the district over the years, mm-hmm. which I think will bring, you know, uh, a, a lot of good things towards the, the principal's position over at MLK. Mm-hmm. Where, are we, we, where are with we with the administrative uh, move to the uh, former Kernan, well, the Kernan School Building? There? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, they're in the process. The architects are drawing up the plans. Uh, we're going through the state approvals that we need in order to do it. And uh, it's, it's right on target. And you know that 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 was another thing. Um, we uh, you know we wanted to to move from the parkway. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we don't want to pay rent anymore to any more private sure. landlords. Um, we want to save money on that so we could put it into teachers. And uh, uh, the board of education uh, did a wonderful job uh, uh, deciding on that and putting that through. And uh, in a, in a few years, we'll be moving over to Kernan and we'll save four to five hundred thousand dollars a year. And um, rent and maintenance costs, taxes, and all of that. Bruce, I got to ask you, you know, getting a little bit more personal. We've mentioned at the beginning of this, you know, we've going through this for four or five years. Where, where I mean, where, where does it get to you? I mean, do you, do you, are you losing sleep at night? Are you are you frustrated with the process? Do you, do you just at the end of the day say, you know, throw your hands up and say, what what do I do? I, I got to be honest with you, I lose sleep all the time you know, for various issues, um, especially during budget season. Mm-hmm. You know. We don't like to lay anybody off. Right. We do not like to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that only hurts our operation and not only hurts uh, the students in the classroom, but, you know, also there's a personal side to that, too, with the people, you, you know, the employees sure. that you lay off, you know, you devastate families. So we do not want to do that. And at the same time, um, we don't want to, you know, we don't like to raise taxes mm-hmm. because um, Utica is really, a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a high poverty area. Sure. And, and people are stretched to the limit. They're paying everything they can pay mm-hmm. now. 
you know, we have senior citizens making decisions on rent, paying rent, buying food, buying medication. So uh, when they're faced with the, and they're all on, you know, most of them are on fixed income. So when they're faced with these kind of difficult financial decisions, we don't want to add to that burden. Because we truly believe that the state needs to step up here, fund Utica properly, and then we can go from there and see, you know, and see, you know, what direction we're. And you're follow. supposed you're supposed to get some answer from the state next week, if I'm correct, right? Um, they're going to be submitting final briefs next week okay. on Tuesday, and um, I do believe, and uh, again, you know, this is this is what they advise us that uh, probably sometime in the fall we should hear a decision.